Good evening. We live. All City Classic. Uh, sports, life, and music. Uh, we live. First, I want to take time out. Sh uh, shout out. Uh, Legends of Seafood. Uh, I want to shout out Soul Pack. You know, check them out. I'm also want to shout out Hoop uh, 22 Dreams. Everybody that checked this feed out, uh, make sure y'all go go to Hoops 22 Dreams and uh, link into the bio and check out the merch. Got some nice Hoop Dream merch. I see my man Shep in here. What's going on, Shep? Uh, so again, everybody, make sure y'all check out Hoop Dreams 22. Yeah, I'm saying the merch. Yeah, I'm saying they got some nice Hoop Dream merch. Uh, I'm going to grab some stuff. Uh, we got to support each other. Black businesses supporting each other. So make sure y'all do that. All right. Got a special to get special guest. You know what I'm saying? We, uh, we on our way to San Antonio with it by way of Chicago. So I'm going to bring my guest in. Bring my guest in right now. Uh, Will send me a uh a request because for some reason I don't have nothing that I can bring you on. If you can send me a request, because I can't for some reason I don't I don't see it say unable to join. So if you can send me the uh uh go. Just give us one second. I'm uh, texting with Will right now. So we can try to bring you more. I'm trying to get him more right now. We're texting. Just give us one hot second. We're trying to get everything situated now. Yeah, there we go. Be able to. Uh, we should be able to bring you on live. There we go. W Gates. There we go, baby. There we go. What's going on, man? How you doing? Man, I'm good, man. I'm blessed. Absolutely. Hey, I, hey, I see my old head, Ricky Tucker, on. I got to shout him out. He, he, he a Philly legend. He played at Providence University. He's actually the first uh, first player from Philly to play in the Big East from Philly. So shout out to Ricky Tucker. So he on. He on, he on to check you out, man. He actually he actually didn't even – he never he, – he heard of the movie, but he never seen it. So when I told him I had you on, he watched it, he watched it uh, the other day. Okay. So – Shout out to him, my old head, man. And uh, so the All City Classic, I just want to brief you about what the All City Classic is. This is real big in Philadelphia. So just imagine, you know, back when you were playing in high school and you had the top uh, 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 freshman from the Cavett League versus the top sophomores. I mean, freshmen in the, in, the, in, the, in the public league. And then you had a sophomore game and a junior game. So that's what we do, top freshmen, sophomores, and juniors the top Catholic league players in the area versus the top public league players in the area. And uh, 25 years, man. Uh, we started in 94. Kobe Bryant played an event, so it's real big in the city of Philadelphia. So I just wanted you to, you know, Chicago, man, y'all, y'all, man, whew, y'all have some players, man. <laughs> man, I'm, I'm recognizing more and more, man, that love go all around, man. That, that. That, that that ball game, man. It don't matter where you come from now, man. If you can play, you can play. Facts, facts, facts. So so yeah, um, Chicago, right? Yes, sir. I I I um I definitely been in Chicago quite a few times because you know I actually worked ABCD, which you I know you attended uh, uh, the Nike uh, when it was ABCD. I actually worked on the Sunday Vaccaro. So I, I'm 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 in Chicago when they had the McDonald's All American Games. Okay. So it's like. When I first come there, right, 
I'm looking, I go, I'm, I'm riding past that. I'm like, oh, this is like Coolie Eye, man. <laughs> this is like Coolie Eye, man. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, I got my deep, my deep, with deep dive pizza and everything. You know what I'm saying? So, so, and, and first of all, I want to say, man, shout out to you for coming on the joint. Uh, Hoop Dreams is definitely one of the most m most influential basketball documentaries, and in my opinion, you know, the best ever documentary made. So, uh, shout out to you for coming on, and uh, you grew up in Cabrini Greens, right? Sure, yes, sir. I always tell people, listen, if you don't know what that said, just look at Good Times. Good Times, Good Times. <laughs> good Times. <laughs> so, listen, I got, before we have some fun, I got a serious, 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 serious question. And only, like, if people ain't from Chicago, they wouldn't understand this. They wouldn't understand this question I'm about to ask you. But if you can't answer this, let me ask you ain't you. from Chicago, man. Let me ask you this. Does it got something to do huh? with food? What was that? Does it got something to do with food? <laughs> no, 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 no. This is a serious question, man. This is a serious, 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 serious question, man. All right? All right? Serious question. Serious question. Man, what's in that mild sauce, man? And house chicken. <laughs> That's a secret, man. <laughs> yo, man, man, yo, that, that, yo, that stuff is good, man. man we, can't, we can't, even tell that, man. That's, that's a secret. <laughs> hey, listen, man, that's something. That either you know it or you don't know it. That's, that's how people run. Either you know it. Right, so, I'm having a. I can't really hear you. Can Can everybody? Can somebody respond? Can you hear? Can you hear? Can you hear? Can you Cause hear you, I hear you, but it's kind of, uh, it's kind of like fatigue. Is it a little muzzle? Yeah, it, it, that sound a little better right there. That's better. Yeah, that sound a little better. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I had I had the legend Terry Cummins on. You know what I'm saying? That was, that was, yeah. yeah uh, Kenny Anderson showcased this joint. Kenny, shout out to Kenny Anderson. He and he in the building. Yeah. You know so so uh, Ben Wilson, man. What can you tell me about Ben Wilson, man? Man, you seen him? You have you have you experienced him seeing him play as a youngster? Absolutely. Let me tell you something, man. Ben Wilson was like the first superhero athlete we had ever seen. Cause he when we was coming up, I mean, we didn't really know about uh, you know, rankings and all that other stuff. And then Ben went to camp and Ben came mm -hmm. back number one. So mm -hmm. this how this how big Ben was at the time. God is my witness. It was Jordan, well, it was Oprah, Jordan, Ben Wilson, then Jesse Jackson. Wow. That's how big Ben Wilson was. Wow, that's how big he was. Yes, sir. Wow. Yes, sir. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. So uh now I'm just gonna drop some some uh Chicago stuff, man. Uh Billy the Kid, man. Billy the Kid Harris. Come on, man. I heard man. I heard nobody never seen me play a bad game, man. That's the word. Hey man, let me tell you something, man. Billy the Kid, first of all. I've never seen Billy the Kid do the same move twice. <laughs> that's, that's, just, that's just true gamemanship there. I've never seen him, first of all, athletic, uh -huh. out of this world. Handles, out of this world. But I'm seriously, moves, I've never seen Billy do the same move twice in my life. I heard he was, I heard he was super, super, super tough, man. I heard a whole lot of stuff on me, man. And, and, and uh, when I started doing my research, uh, 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 about you. I started looking like, yo, this class, he played with is crazy, like crazy. And we go, and we definitely going to get into that. We definitely, we definitely going to get into that. But listen, how was it, uh, you as a youngster, you know, growing up in Cabrini, uh, uh, Greens, uh, 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 and this before, I guess before you pretty much made your name as, as William Gates and just, you know, uh, you know, the community and everything. Because I know when I to ask Terry Cummins, man, he said, man, I'm going to keep it a bean. He said, I had a gun in one hand and a knife in the other. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I was too young for that, man. See, when I, when I came up, uh, and, and I'm going to pick this era. It's like the 80s. That, to me, the 80s was like the beginning of really what gangs began because it was like turf. So if you had on the wrong colors, you was on the wrong side of the street, that – but they was fighting with baseball bats. And I'm not saying that that's any better, but right. bats and chains and fists. Man, right. to the late 80s, like about 89, going into 90, man, that's, that's when we started seeing that that gunfire. I'm not saying folks weren't getting shot back in the early 80s, but it wasn't prevalent like it had become. 
you know, 89, mm -hmm. 90, man, it was like, man, this this is real. So when I was growing up and coming up, man, the the, the, the thing I did was I just balled. And what they did, right. you had, and y'all seen the, 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 the documentary out there, we had the Hoopers pass. Either mm -hmm. you balled. Or you ball. That's that was right, that's right, reality. right. You ball or you right, ball. Right. It came down to that. Right. So, what what territory would have been like a Brinley Green? Is that Vice Lords? That's GDs? That's Rangers? That was, what? That was straight GD. <laughs> straight, straight GD. GD. <laughs> All right. Now, listen, they had they had a couple of they had a couple of Vice Lord buildings, but for the most part, it was it was a straight GD community without a doubt. Okay. Okay, so just thinking about like you making you your own. Real deep, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, <laughs> say this 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 is about, you know, Will Gates, man, the Will Gates coming up. This ain't about like hoop dream per se, although we gotta address that because that's part of your, your history, but like I felt like in the film, like they didn't show enough of you in terms of like it seemed like and I and I had this down as a as a, as a question, but it seemed like they never showed you being happy. It was like always serious. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Because you know, I I think man, in retrospect, when I think about it too, they they had us. They had to give two stories, mm -hmm. and my story was straight basketball. You know, mm -hmm. like you know, I even tell people, man, all of a sudden my daughter shows up in the movie, but nobody know. You know, like where she come from? There she is. Right. But it was always it was straight basketball, and I think. Mm -hmm. On one on one end, that was being pushed, but of course, man, life life changed. When life changed, man, right. things happened. Right, right. But I right. think that was just the the scenario that was going on because, you know, uh, the stuff that Arthur was going through, man, that was happening in, in my home. You know, it it wasn't no different. I mean, outside the fact, you know, you know, you know, my dad wasn't on drugs, but I didn't yeah. see my, I didn't see my dad, you know, growing up. Right. So, uh, you know, my mom working, you know, two jobs, man, trying to make stuff happen. And, you know, she, well, not two jobs. She's working, you know, double shifts. So, man, by the time I go to school in the morning, she'd be gone. And when I got home, when she got home, I'd be asleep. So, you know, it was it was, it was was like that. Right, 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 right. So just, I'm going to back it up, right? Uh, just growing up, just like you starting to hoop and everything. Is anybody, like, you looked up to, patting your game after, like, who was your, like, early mentors and early guys that you looked up to and part of your game after? I'm going to be honest with you, man. See, again, I'm that old school, and uh, Kenny, Kenny, I understand this, man. This is, when, you, when, you, when you made a jump shot, you thought you was bird. When you threw a nice uh -huh. pass, you thought you was magic. You was hell on the rock. I thought I was Isaiah. If I did a uh -huh. good basketball move, I thought I was Dr. J. I mean, I was, you know, we, I was like this this combination of athletes. And of course, man, the most important guy I saw growing up playing was my older mm -hmm. brother, Curtis. I mean, Facts. Kurt, Kurt Facts. was a monster, man. That, Facts. Facts. Kurt was a beast. Facts. <laughs> I want to say uh, shout out to Curtis. Rest in peace, Kurt. Uh, yeah, man. You know, uh, just heard stories about him. And, you know, and I'm fortunate, and I'm going to get into it. Uh, I know I got some people up in Chicago, so I know a little so I made a couple phone calls and stuff like that. Got you know, so that's why I, I'm digging deep, man. I hear you. <laughs> made a couple I hear phone you. calls, whatever. I you know what I'm saying? You. But you know, growing up, like who was like your toughest competitors in terms of like before you hit high school? Like who was the people around your way? You know what I'm saying? Man, that was, that that was so many. It. it was so many cats, man. There's one guy, man, from the neighborhood named Derek Brewer. Man, he was just game was just cold, man. I mean, he had the whole package, man. He could jump, he could shoot. He could handle that. That was like the first guy that I had ever seen saying, "Man, I want to be like this dude here, man. Mm -hmm. This this dude can play." So he. And what's, he was this, kind of, what's this cat name again? His name was Derek Brewer. All man. right, Derek Brewer. Yep. Game game was, and then man, there's so many guys. Fields. I mean, I just remember man going to the local court. We called it Chicago Avenue. We used to call it the Avenue, and they used to have a tournament very similar to like Rutgers. Had all the mm -hmm. names, even even Terry Cummins. You know, they used to come down and play in these tournaments. Mm -hmm. Man, Isaiah used to come play in these tournaments. Mark McGuire, and man, the names that these guys had playing out on the court, you know, the Mojo Man, Dr. Helicopter, I mean, Nate the Snake Bun. Like, that was the first time I had said, you know what? I just want to play ball so I can get me a name like that. 
I mean, even my right. friend, his, his name was Pearly Gates. It's almost like if you didn't have a basketball name, I, I don't even mm -hmm. know if you could have been an athlete in my neighborhood. You would you would know uh -huh. by your name. Right, right, right. Let me ask you this: How how good how good was uh Jamie Brandon? And did you play against him at an early age, or that was younger, or that no, was older? No, me and Jamie, we Jamie Jamie a year ahead of me. I played against Jamie and 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 Johnny Salvi. I mean, you know, when we was coming up, man. Jamie Jamie was he was the next Jordan. I ain't, man, I ain't going in front on that brother. That brother, man, Jamie Brandon was doing some things that we hadn't seen. He was about six four strong body like he almost had like that lebron type body that physique uh -huh. of that nature man jamie was the real deal man I, I just i mean i don't know what happened in college but that dude man when that dude came out of high school he was legitimately one of them guys if they was doing it back then he could have skipped college and went straight to the pros uh -huh. Uh -huh. so let me ask you this like when was it like you said to yourself, like, "Yo, man, I'm I'm all right. I really get I really get played. I really can play this game." Because I know yeah. at some point in time it happened for everybody. I I think I, I think that happened for me when I first went to St. Joe's, because when I went mm -hmm. out there, I, I I have to admit this, man. When I worked when I first went out to St. Joe's, first of all, I ain't never seen height like that before, man. I had to, we had score. Mm -hmm. We had Daryl Cunningham. Daryl was six seven. Score was six eight. Uh, we had a guy named Frankie mm -hmm. Tim. He was six five. I had never seen a front court like that. But then as we was playing, man, I was able to hold my own because my mindset said, man, catching my neighborhood. Can you get these guys and I can get some guys in my uh -huh. neighborhood. So I knew then that I was going to be all right. I knew then. So, freshman uh, year. so hey, your freshman year, so, so, mm -hmm. so, like, the, the, what was that main? Like, what was? Did you have growing up uh, a specific basketball regimen, or did you just play it all day? Because I know when I had Mahmoud Abdul Rauf on, he just talked about like how his Tourette syndrome just forced him just to like play all day, and uh, he would leave right. like to the course too. He was like totally exhausted. You know what? I I think we all did it back then. I mean, when the when the when daylight broke, he was on the court, and that night. Man, I used to hear my mother calling off, calling me from Cambridge, telling me to come on home because, to me, basketball, man, that was my oasis. Like when I went there, man, I didn't think about anything else but hooping. So that became my place of refuge, and that was the only place I wanted to be. So I didn't even know I was giving the game that kind of attention because I wasn't doing it, trying to get better. I was doing it because I just loved playing, and it gave me peace. From uh -huh. anything else I did was matter of fact, man, when I when I see young athletes today, man, you can tell that they got so much on their mind. It's almost like you see how these kids they can't play free sometimes. And I'm like, man, home life or whatever else is so involved that they can't even escape it on the place where it's supposed to be fun, where it's supposed to be a game, the basketball court. Oh, you know what? Before I before I uh forget, I wanna shout out Dexter Gordon. You know what I'm saying? I know you're cool with Dex. That's you know what I'm saying? Boy, Dex, yes, sir. <laughs> and one in the house. Yep. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. I want to shout out Dex or whatever, whatever. I just had a live feed yesterday uh, with uh, Marty Collins. He he, he, he got to play in Philly, played at Temple University, and uh, he's the player development coach uh, with the Toronto Raptors. And he brought Van Bleek on. <laughs> you know, Fred Van Bleek or whatever. He brought him on the joint, man. And uh, I thought that Chicago was connection. Cool. He's the N one guy. <laughs> yeah, that Chicago connection, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. <laughs> hey man, listen, man. I was looking at your list of players, man. Shh. Man, hey, Chicago, it's crazy. Chicago man. put out a lot. Chicago crazy. Put out a lot. Crazy. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Crazy, crazy, man. Crazy, crazy, man. That. Whew. True, man. Listen, man. People don't even understand, man. So, listen. How was your uh, transition uh, going up there to to St. Joe's? I mean, we talked about a little bit on the court. You know what I'm saying? But how was it like off the court and adjusting to that different environment coming from uh, Cabrini uh, Green? I'm gonna tell you this, man. Real talk. It was. It was. It was. Man, it was difficult because I mean, I, I here I am, man. I, I I hadn't seen grass. I ain't seen. Houses, I had, you know, families. I, you know, it was a whole new, different world for me. So I'm out here, 
you know, man, I remember, I put it to you like this, the first day of school, I didn't even know mm -hmm. we had a dress code. I show up in, you know, my air one gear, because that's, by the way, that's what we wore back then. We wore the air one, baby, uh, going to the, okay, to the team. Okay. I had an air <laughs> one cap, shoes, sweats, the whole nine yards. And, man, I go in there, first day, man, this guy's about winning. First day, I get detention because I ain't ready for school. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was my introduction. And I literally said to myself, this ain't the school for me. I said, mm -hmm. man, I, they're like, how did you not know? I'm like, how am I supposed to know? I, mm -hmm. I, that one my norm growing up, you you wore what you had to wear. You didn't wear a uniform to school. So that 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 transition, it took me about two months really to kind of figure that thing out and get in the groove with that. And not to mention yeah, the fact I, when you're the only at many times the only black person in a classroom. That, that was that was right, tough. Right. Right. So I, I actually coached uh, at a school called Newman which is the powerhouse out of Philadelphia, which uh, at that time it was no powerhouse, but I made that motherfucker powerhouse bringing players <laughs> in, but bringing players in. But, uh, you know, one of the things that I always sold to the parents is just, just like you said, man, having, having your uniform on, having your shirt tucked in, having to be on time, accountability. I just kind of felt like, listen, you know, coming from where we come from, it's going to prepare you for the bigger picture. Uh, and prepare you for life, and that's one of the, one of the messages that I always uh, uh, told to the uh, uh, parents. In addition to, uh, we didn't have no girls there, so I was like, you don't have to worry about no girl trouble, fighting over no girls, or getting nothing over no girls, because it's all boys. So that was one of the messages that you know I used to send out to the parents, and I and I and I, and I think you know that is the structure that uh, our Catholic schools uh, give you. Yeah, and you were no yeah, more so uh, uh, attending. It. I would say this, I, I agree with you on that one. The the not having the girls as a distraction, you can be mentally focused. But our issue was the girls' schools was right across the street. <laughs> so we tried to figure out how to get over there. <laughs> how to get over there. <laughs> right, so uh mm, mm, mm. so your freshman year. Yes, sir. Right? Mm -hmm. You come in, you put work in, like did you exceed your expectations? Like your freshman and your sophomore year, did you exceed your expectations? Did you have expectations? You know, uh... I, I didn't have personal expectations because again, I I didn't understand the concept of rankings and 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 being a talent. I didn't know that. My expectations came from this when I first went to St. Joe's and basketball season started. I actually started on the JV squad. We called it the sophomore team. So I played mm -hmm. with them, and we were playing in the in a Thanksgiving tournament. And I averaged like 40-something points a game. So Coach Ping said, hey, uh, I'm going to bring you up. Uh, you think you can handle it? You think you're ready for it? I said, man, that's what I came here to do. Now, this is where the challenge came in for me. This was the motivation. My older brother, Curtis, when I first went to St. Joe's, he said, I'm not coming to your game unless you play in varsity. So <laughs> when I made varsity, he was like, well, I ain't coming to a game unless you start. <laughs> Right, 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 so, right, right, right. So he kept raising the ante. And then I said, well, Kurt, I'm starting. He said, well, I ain't coming to no games unless you're going to at least give me 10 points a game. So, you know, he kept Right, 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 he right. Was my, he was my pillar of, of challenges, not what anybody else thought. I, I just wanted to make sure that I was doing what he needed to do because I wanted him at the game. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. And he gave, you that, he gave you that love that you needed, man. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And especially, man, Absolutely. when you got you got a you got a younger brother and you see the talent in them, you know what I'm saying? And you can try to get it out of them the best way you can, man. And I think that, you know, that's what a bigger uh, older brother is, is supposed to do. So you you start starting your freshman year, you have a pretty good season, you know what I'm saying? And then uh you kinda enter your your, your sophomore year. Like how'd that go your sophomore year? Man, I got to my sophomore year, uh started pretty strong. But what happened was uh, for about almost, man, about six or seven games, I went into like a dry spell. And uh, I remember the newspaper saying, man, St. Joe's ain't going to ain't gonna do well if, if, if Ping can't get that fire lit under Will Gates again. But the issue was I hadn't told Coach that my girlfriend was pregnant and I hadn't really told anybody. So I was kind of dealing with that. And that's what I was saying earlier. So many other things was on my mind. 
I couldn't mm -hmm. focus on basketball. Right. But then right, when right. I finally told Ping, we actually played that weekend that I told him. I think I ended up scoring like for the whole weekend. I think it was like 57 points. And the mm -hmm. newspaper was like, oh, I think Ping lit a fire in him. No, I came <laughs> clean and told Coach. So all that pressure came right, out. Right, 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 right. <laughs> And, and that's another thing, man, team. like, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm sorry, on. I cut you off. I'm sorry, I cut no, you off, my fault. I was, able, I was able to hoop after that That pressure was released. Yeah, man, that, that pressure is something, and that's something that I wanted to talk about because you was dubbed the next Isaiah Thomas. That's pressure. You just told us about, you know, having your daughter and your, your girlfriend pregnant. You know, that's pressure. And the fact you got the camera shut following you around, you know what I'm saying? Filming this documentary. That's pressure. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> so, yeah. so how, man, how you handle all that, man? I'm going to be honest with you, man. I think coming from the neighborhood growing up, uh, after seeing some of the things that I've seen and, you know, watch people that I watched, man, nothing that was thrown at me shocked me. Right. And so having, so having a camera, having people say, hey, you the next Isaiah, man, that, that was that was just what it was, you know, but uh, I re I remember again like 1989, man, and we was outside barbecuing and everything was good and and fun and all of a sudden, you know, my daughter she was out there playing and I hear these gunshots, pow 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 pow, man, I'm trying to find her and grab her and bring her to the house. Going through that kind of stuff, that mm -hmm. was more real than right the right right and. Hey, you the next Isaiah Thomas. I appreciated it. But <laughs> right, 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 it right. Move, right. But like it didn't move me one way or the other. <laughs> right, the right, right. Yeah, and the motivation was I I need to do well so I can get my family out of this situation. That that was what's on my mind and my heart. Okay. Facts, 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 facts. Quick question. Did y'all uh play Parazzo uh, East? Yeah, yeah, Parazzo East, man. His was crazy. <laughs> Joe sat in the middle of Proviso East and Proviso West. So we played both of them. And you know, and at the time, Proviso West had one of the top state Christmas tournaments. My first, first place, first time I had ever seen Fred Van Fleet play was in that, that Christmas tournament at Proviso West. But yeah, I played against the three amigos, man. Dunny Boyce, Sharif mm -hmm. Ford, Mike Finn. Mike everybody, everybody know about Mike Finn, man. Mike Finn. Yeah, Mike Finley. And that's what, and that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm like, Yo, this cat, this cast is crazy, man. Oh, this yeah. class is crazy. You know, I made my phone, I made a couple phone calls from my people now in Chicago, and they told me, it's like, yo, man, ask him about Proviso East. They had three pros. Yes, they did. They had yeah, three pros. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. I was like, whoa, that's that's a that's a, and then I, and 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 that's just the tip of the iceberg. You got some other dudes. You got the Juwan yeah. Howard. You know what I'm saying? The Howard. Nathan, you, you know what I'm saying? The five through, class miss that was McDonald's All Americans. Yes. That's what I'm gonna say. If you go through that that top one hundred back then, at least ten to twelve guys was from Illinois that was top one hundred that year. Uh -huh. That was top one hundred. And them and them and man, yeah, like you say, three amigos all made the pros. <laughs> uh Jerron uh -huh. Howard, what we know, we know Nuke's situation, man. I mean Nuke Nuke. Doing it over there in Michigan now. I mean, yeah. Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. no, that was, And I gotta that was send crazy, some love. Man. I gotta send some love to my guy because you know he he the crossover king. Man, and you asked me earlier, what's the toughest guy I ever played against? Tim Hardaway. Uh -huh. <laughs> Tim Hardaway. Tim Hardaway. Man. Yes, the crossover king, man. That, okay. What what year was Tim? This was this was about nineteen man, it's about that year when Jordan came back to play with the Wizards. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. And, yeah. and Timmy was a little older, man. I remember guarding Timmy. Timmy was acting like I wasn't even guarding him. I was like, man, <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? So who was your, who was your high school personal uh, rivalry? <sighs> Probably the, the, the East, Proviso East. They, mm -hmm. they they were the guys. As a matter of fact, what was interesting about Proviso East, a lot of guys either went to East or they went to Joe's. And if they came to Joe's and they had to leave, they went back to East. So when we played against East, when we played against each other, it was like it was the it was the same squad. You know, everybody that 
that went to Joe's lived in Maywood or lived close to enough to Maywood to go to Proviso East. Mm -hmm. So let's that's shoot to the uh, summer real quick. Like uh, summer, summer, the summer camps and all that. Like mm -hmm. you went to Nike. Like how was that experience? Uh, how was that experience at the Nike camp that year? I'm going to be honest with you, man. First of all, in retrospect, phenomenal. But when you're there, I, like, man, again, because people got to remember, this is before Instagram. This is before Facebook. This is before Twitter. So a lot of those guys, I really didn't know who they were. So if, if they weren't local, like, I knew who Chris Weber was. I knew who Big Dog Glenn Robinson was, which, by the way, was a beast himself. I knew who Big Dog was. Um because those guys lived in Gary, Indiana. Those guys lived in Michigan. I knew who Jalen Rose was. <clears throat> but the other guys, I didn't know, like, who Danielle Marshall was. I was like, man, this cat is cold. Yeah, man, so, yeah. So, you know, you start, you start seeing all these other guys. And, you know, I, I even tell people this. Like, I didn't know who Eric Snow was at the time or Sean Respert, who he was at the time. But all these cats are at, at Nike camp doing, doing their thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't even put your thing down too, man. It came out there. We had a kid uh, out of Philly, uh, Pennsylvania, named Kareem Towns. I don't know if you ever heard of him. Yeah, but he was at the camp, huh? Yeah, yeah. Kareem Towns. Yeah, yeah. He was at camp. He was at camp. He was at camp that uh, that time too. I don't know if you uh, knew he was there. Or you remember competing against him or anything like that? But he he was there as well. Tough, 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 tough guy from from actually from my neighborhood too. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, AAU, who, did you play AAU? You know what, man? We we didn't play AAU. Our, our, our summer leagues was, was, I mean, we played over 80 summer league games, so we played about three, four tournaments in a week. Only thing mm -hmm. we did was we do what was called the Boston Shootout. Yeah. And, and, they, and, and that, that was the closest thing we had ever done to AAU. We just, we just, didn't, we just didn't do it. Oh, the Boston shootout was major, man. Yeah. Who, yeah, yeah. Who, now, who ran, who ran that for y'all? Was that Larry uh, Butler? No, that was uh, not Butler. Was uh, that Mr. Mac? Yes. Mac yes, Irvin? Yes, sir. Mac Irvin? Yes, sir. <laughs> see, yes, sir. I, I, see, I told you on Chicago. I'm yeah, Chicago. You, 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 <laughs> you got it. Yo, Mr. You, Mac. Mr. Mac was my guy, man. Rest in peace, Mr. Mac. He was yes, my sir. guy, man. You know, I met Mr. Mac uh, working ABCD with him. Um... Uh, you know the Irvings, Nick, and all of them, and yeah, I, I, the whole when they were playing, family. yeah, the Irving family, yep, yep, yep. When they had Antoine Walker, you know what I'm saying? It was like, yo, man, you know, Mr. Mac, man, he showed me nothing, nothing but love, man, oh, nothing man. but love. You know what I'm saying, Mr. Mac. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I told you, man, Chicago, man, New York, my second home, but Chicago might be my third, man. <laughs> <laughs> Chicago might be my third, man. We'll so let's take it. Let's take, let's take it back to the high school now. You know, your sophomore, you had to, you you having a baby, you know, now is your junior year, is that the that's the year you got hurt? Uh yeah, going into my junior year. Actually, it's interesting. I just completed a great sophomore campaign going into the junior year, and we was playing in this tournament of champions. Uh mm -hmm. everybody anybody who won a summer league, you got to play in this tournament of champions. And we was getting ready to play for the championship game. Actually, we played for the championship game. And, man, I just went down the court, did a dunk, ran back down the court, got in a defensive position, and, man, I couldn't move. That, man. Just like that. Just like that. And before and I know it, man, I, I was at the emergency room. What, what exactly did you tear? I just tore cartilage. The 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 reason that it 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 got – delay like it did because when they did I had two surgeries with it. The first surgery, they tried to repair the cartilage. So when they tried oh. to repair it, I literally had a, what should have been a four week sit out, ended up turning into almost a three and a half, four month sit out. Oh. And so then when they did the second surgery, uh, that took me four weeks, which was interesting because uh, when I had my second surgery, we had just uh, lost um, in the playoffs games. The free throws I missed, and then I had surgery the next day. So, wow. um, and this I'm gonna say this was what March, 
No, I had surgery in April. I'm sorry. I had surgery in April. Then I had to get ready in May to go play at the Nike camp in June. So now that was the first time I felt pressure. It's like, man, I got I got a month to try to recover from a knee surgery and go hoop. It's like, okay, let's see what we can do about this. So Right, 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 right. So uh was there something that just lingered on and nagged and, and, and lingered on in your career, that injury? Yeah, man, I I just it just I don't know if it had ever gotten to the point where it healed correctly. And so it just it just stayed, you know, after games, my knees would be swollen and, and it just it just you know, I, I could never get that full, you know, ninety degree right. bend or that hundred and twenty degree bend, you know. So I was trying right. to figure out how to stay as competitive as I could, um, so that I can go and play college basketball. That that became my, my concern at that point. But you know what's crazy, man? If if it would have happened today, <laughs> you've been back in two weeks. Easy. A thousand percent, man. It's crazy, man, with the technology, man. It's crazy with the technology, man. Uh, if it happened today, man, you know, you'd have been back. So what uh, what was like – give me some of your most memorable moments in high school. Man, the, the, the most memorable moments, obviously, you know, um, as crazy as this may sound, when, when the guys um, – I'll see my boy Tony Rita out there, brother Tony Rita, Marquette Law, St. Mm-hmm. Joe's Law. Uh, right. was when guys like Tony, those guys came back and played against us, man. That was one thing uh, you, 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 you can never, uh, you know, it's, it's even hard to put into words that former players come back and play and you get the ball against them and they knock you down, push you around, and, but then pulling you up, man. I mean, it was, it was crazy seeing a guy like Tony Rita, a guy like Isaiah come back and play. You know, uh, that's why now when, you know, even St. Joe's guys now, they go back and play. It's, it's not I'm right. going to see Evan Turner go back to St. Joe's and play against, the you know, the the new guys there. I mean, that's just, man, it's hard um, to even, you know, comprehend how much how much that meant. So that that's probably some of my greatest moments. Now, my other moments, obviously, man, is on the basketball court. You know, mm-hmm. when, when you're going down there and, Man, you you posterizing guys or you crossing up. Uh, win big games and I mean it's it was crazy. I remember the first time, my very first game, and all our games was like this. But I didn't understand again the 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 concept of how crazy Chicago basketball was. But when you go to a high school game at my high school, people couldn't even get in. Man, mm-hmm. I had no idea what that was about. When you go in there and you, you're like, man, this wall to wall packed in here. Or right, you, right. Game right. so big, they got to go put your game in another gym because too many people want to come to the games to watch y'all play. Man, that that was just that was just unheard of. But it's kind of like the norm now. I right. see, you know, high school guys. Man, I'm watching ESPN. Man, these jokers filling up. College and gymnasiums now, man. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy, man. You know, I want to shout out Chicago Will Bynum. Yes, right? sir. Will the thrill. Will Bynum. I'm gonna give you a quick. I'm gonna give you a quick Will Bynum story. So <laughs> he comes over to New Jersey to play in the hoop group uh, uh, basketball camp, right? So, so he he's the same. Uh, he's the same grade as a. Uh, uh, Andre Barrett and Eddie Griffin. Uh, rest in peace, Eddie Griffin. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so. He up this joint, chilling. Now I'm a counselor. He's killing this thing, man. Like I got one of my players at Newman. I ain't gonna say his name. He don't even want to stick him. So now we get to the uh, we get to the coaches meeting. Like he chilling the whole joint, man. I'm watching. I'm refing the games. I'm like, I'm like this dude the best point guard in his joint, right? So now, so now we get to the coaches joint. These motherfuckers screw him out of the top twenty game. And I'm sitting up here like, yo. This dude is the best. They's like, oh, man, we don't want to turn this into a Andre Barrett. You know what I'm saying? Versus him. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, man, this is, this is. No, so I'm talking about Will Bynum. Will Bynum. So Will Bynum. He didn't, he didn't give him. He didn't, they didn't. He didn't. Play he, made the, he, made the, he made the, he made the, uh, the, the, the best of the rest, which was like the 40, the, uh, the 40, the, the top 40 game. I'm like, man, this is some book. 
And you know what's crazy, man? Man, Will talked about it during the big three. You know what I'm saying? I was like, well, man, I remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, man, that was nice. I was like, yeah, man, I was right, I was right there, man. He was, he was, he was baking them dudes, man. Let me tell so you. So shout out man. to Will. I'm gonna bring Will on too. That's my young boy. Yeah, yeah, man. Will, Will, Will. Real deal. I'm gonna tell you this, man. It's only it's only <laughs> two guys that that I've seen a term that came after me. That when I saw them play, I said, "These dudes are pros." Will was one, and mm -hmm. Derrick Rose was the other. When I first right. saw them two cats play, I said, oh, those dudes are pros. I said, the only thing going right. to stop them is an injury. But I said, they pros. I said, them dudes are pros. Absolutely. Right, right. You know what? I'm coming up. I, I was uh, coming to the Chicago game because my young boy, Russell Butler, uh, played uh, for the Bulls. He had a little quick stint with the Bulls. So mm -hmm. I had him take it. So I'm walking up to John. I got my little... Philly little shit on your ass, open up or whatever, whatever. So this dude stopped me, right? Like, yo, right. Cole made the best player in the league. This is your dad. Rose got the MVP. Cole made the best player in the league. D-Rose is. Yeah, yeah. So it was all a lot of way. We was getting into a little D-Rose, Kobe debate or whatever, whatever. Right. So he seen that fully, he seen my fully shirt. He was like, oh, man, let me, let me, let me stop, dude. Let him know, man. It was a nice little a friendly exchange, man. But uh, it was right outside before I went into the game or whatever. I said, yeah. So, Kyle, we y'all real proud for D Rose, man. D Rose is a bad mark, man. Yeah, he is, bad man. yeah, he is, man. I, I, I can only imagine what D Rose would have been, you know, barred from the injuries. Because the truth is, I think he personally, I think he's killing now. But the problem is, people keep saying he is killing now. Yeah, but they the screwed him out of the All Star game. Yeah, but they, they twice, twice. <laughs> but they keep calling him the old D Rose. They got to stop doing that. That dude, right. That dude balling. As long as you keep saying "Old oh, D Rose," that's all people gonna be thinking about. But he right, it, right, man. right, right. So, how was your uh, transition uh, in the in in the college, man? Let me tell how you, man. In the college, my my this my tra Let me just put it this way: When I first got to school, you know, you, you know, up back there. up. Let me, wait, wait, before you answer that, let me back that up, right? Okay. Because uh. Like, who was your top uh, schools, and, and why did you even consider, like, Marquette, you know what I'm saying, as the school to go to? Let me my ask top, you that. My top what? schools was Michigan State, mm -hmm. Kansas, uh, Marquette, Indiana, and I just threw this one in there, but Coach never let me go there. I was going to go to Hawaii just because it was in Hawaii. <laughs> Literally, I was going to go to Hawaii. So this how it went down. There was three guards that was coming out when I was playing. Calvin Rayford was one, even though I thought the best point guard that was coming out of my class was Travis Best, without a doubt. TB mm -hmm. was, was, was the, I thought he was the best point guard in that class. Um, Calvin Rayford and Eric Snow. So right. I was those schools' number one choice. So when I decided to go to Marquette, because Calvin Rayford actually was from Milwaukee, he mm -hmm. ended up going to Kansas, and Eric Snow ended up at at Michigan State. So the reason I chose Marquette was because my older brother Curtis actually signed at Marquette. But because his mm -hmm. grades wasn't good enough, he was a Prop 48, he ended up going to a junior college instead, instead of sitting out a year. So I really kind of did it because it was more like, a, like me and my brother, man, we're going to do this together. You supposed to go mm -hmm. to Marquette? I'm gonna go to Marquette. We gonna we gonna fulfill this dream together. So that's mm -hmm. how I really ended up at Marquette. Yeah. So tell me about that transition. You know, uh, basketball wise, social social life, and all that. Well, let me tell you, man. Well, first of all, Milwaukee is Milwaukee. We see what's happening right now. Even with the with the team decided to sit out a game. That was, that was, I mean that was happening when I was there back then too. You kind of you kind of knew what kind of city it was. But mm -hmm. in terms of basketball, I remember <laughs> man, I first get up to campus, you know, and and because Marquette, it's like all we got was basketball there in terms of the, the major sports because we didn't have a mm -hmm. football team. Man, right. so we go to open gym. You know, I get out there on the court, man. I look up, this big six, seven dude guarding me, man, and um, it's a Milwaukee Bucks player. I'm like, what y'all doing down here? So mm -hmm. the whole Milwaukee Bucks team 
was down there playing against us. And man, I kid you not, I was 170 pounds coming out of high school. I had never felt strength like that in my life. Robinson was guarding me and he was like, Will, you too light, you too light. Was hitting me, was knocking me down. I knew then, I said, man, I need to get in the gym. I, I, I remember going the next day to my coach, how do we get stronger? He was like, oh, don't worry about it. We got a weight program. We're going to get your weight up. But I, I never felt anything like that in my life. I mean, think about this, man. I'm six foot one. Alvin Robertson, one of the toughest defenders to ever play in the league, that joker was guarding me. It's like, mm -hmm. man, that joker changed my mind about, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the concept of the game. Because, you know, you always just think your athleticism can overcome any challenge. I have to get strong, man. I think it's strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me ask you this before I before I keep going to further into your uh, 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 college career. Uh, when y'all was filming uh, uh, Hoop Dreams, and um, you, I mean, you have some heck, heck of a players, and this is just like, you know, the uh, the senior class. I mean, you got the junior class, you know what I'm saying, and sophomore class, which was crazy as well. Did, did 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 you feel like it was like any animosity because y'all guys was being filmed and and uh, with some of your peers and some of the other players that y'all guys yeah. were were filmed? Then more importantly, uh, more importantly, uh, uh, like how that all come about? Because I never asked you how the hoop dreams thing came about. Well, to answer the animosity one, actually, man, I I, I didn't I didn't feel the animosity because when when it wasn't like Hoop Dreams had made my game successful. It was more that because my game was successful, they wanted to film me. So I kind of always mm. felt ahead of that. But uh, it's interesting enough, when I went to the Nike camp, man, that's probably one of the first times I felt like I needed the camera crew. Because when they came down there, all the guys at the Nike camp was like, man, who is this dude that got his own camera crew? <laughs> following them around. So it actually kind of played to my advantage at that point. It kind of uh, put you in the eyes of coaches and, you know, everybody else. And, and everybody, and, yeah. Yeah, so that that kind of was like, okay, yeah, this this working for me now. But how it all went down was really, man, kind of like how the movie started when Arthur was playing against Isaiah. See, I was already going to St. Joe's and I was at camp that day. I just couldn't, um, they couldn't feel me because, you know, we hadn't agreed to yet. But after the game, I mean, after camp, they was talking to Coach Ping, and Coach Ping was like, hey, you guys are doing this movie, which, by the way, a lot of people don't know this, but it, it actually wasn't even titled Hoop Dreams. It actually was called Higher Goals. The whole thing was that it was going to show how kids go from street ball to organized basketball. And Coach Ping said, hey, well, listen, I got this kid coming from Cabrini. Uh, man, he, he'll be perfect for what you guys are trying to do. So they came up and talked to me, and and I said, hey, I'm good, but listen, you got to go home, talk to mom, you got to talk to my brother, and if they okay with it, we can do it. Two days later, they show up at my house, and we start filming the next week. It literally went down that fast, that quick, just like that. Oh, okay. So prior to that, uh, was that your first time uh, meeting Arthur, or y'all was cool from around the way? Or? You know what? I, I knew of Arthur because we used to play in the same grade school tournament. And he went to one of the rival schools in the neighborhood. So we didn't hang out with each other, but I but I knew of Arthur. So when we went to St. Mm -hmm. Joe's together, Arthur and I, that became our road dog. Because at that point now, um, he was the only guy that I could connect with. He was the only guy that, right. man, like like when he would miss school, I was like, man, where you at? How you going to leave me out here like this by myself? You know, I'm like, come <laughs> on, man. <laughs> Don't do me like right, that. Right, so, cause, right. Because he... You know, we understood each other. We 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 knew what the struggle was, how to get out there. We in the hallway playing this game called Get Like Me, flipping quarters, you know, to to get lunch money. You know, we 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 did all that together. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Yeah. So uh, just forwarding it back to uh, you know, Mark Chat in college, and you played with uh, Kevin O'Neill, right? Played He's the one that he coached you and everything. So how did that? I mean, how was that? Because I mean, when you look at your stats and everything, it didn't seem that you played a lot or you got a lot of minutes or, or anything like that. Like, uh, like, can you kind of like us walk us through like what was going on with that whole situation at Marquette? 
You know what's interesting is that, and and nothing against Kevin O'Neill. He's a, he's a heck of a recruiter. But what I didn't know at the time was that he was a a a big man coach. Right. You know, even like now, I, I tell guys that I that I work out with, hey, when you when you're looking at schools and you're being recruited, if you're a guard, you might not want to go to a school where the offense is heavily dominated by the big guys. Or if you're a big mm-hmm. guy, you might not want to go to a school where the offense is heavily dominated by the small guys. So uh, our school was dominated by big guys, and, and I didn't really know that at the time. I thought I could come in and just kind of do my thing. And literally, man, for like the first five, six games, I was probably getting five, six, seven minutes a game. And I'm thinking, hey, this is this is crazy. You know, this is like, this what's is going on? What I'm, 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 right? Uh, <laughs> All right, I'm, I, I mean, literally, I started saying to myself, man, come on, I'm one of the top 100 players in the nation. And I literally was saying to myself, man, I, I, okay, if I ain't high major, I know I can go mid-major and do some damage and do some work. Right. So, you know, my mind, you start thinking about all those kinds of things. But then we actually ended up having to play the University of Wisconsin. And I didn't play the whole first half. And we was getting spanked. Second half, Going to third, I mean, the second half, about, I think, five minutes went off the clock. Joker puts me in the game. I go on a tear. <laughs> I think I was going like 10, 12 in a row. And we ended up actually catching up and losing to them, I think, about two. After that, man, he, he started starting me every game. So mm-hmm. I was starting, but I wasn't scoring. He wasn't, he wasn't, right. he wasn't letting me shoot the ball. He's like, Will, you got to play deep yeah. for me. So we literally went, ran a three-guard offense, per se, but I was the biggest of the three guards, so I'm guarding the small forward. So I spent most of my time guarding a 6'5", 6'6", 6'7", guy, night in and night out. I remember we playing Memphis, man, and I'm guarding Penny Hardaway. I'm like, come on, got to be a better way. Got to be a better mm-hmm. way. But to get on right. the floor, you got to do what you got to do. I do what you got to do. And, and that's what I try to stress to young guys as well. Uh, you got to pick that system that's best for you. Uh, a lot of people, they, they, they go on, you know, people name, the name recognition and this and that. And you got to pick, you know, just like you said, if it's a guard or any coach, like if you're playing for Coach Cheney, he let his guards go. That's a good place for a guard. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, you know, you got to be mindful of that. In basketball, the kids know that, you know, when you get there, the coach going to do it his way. So it's going to be my way or the highway, or you're not going to survive. You and know what I'm saying? Actually, that was my first realization, man. When I got there, I remember Kevin O'Neill, he pulled me to the side and he said, hey, Will, man, it was great recruiting you. Man, I, 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 man, trust me, I'm so glad you're here. Then two seconds later, man, that dude turned around looking at me and said, now it's your responsibility. I said, my responsibility? What are you talking about? See, I didn't have a concept at the time that <laughs> scholarships were were only one year at a time. I'm just thinking, right, hey, right. responsibility. Man, I'm here. Did, did I, didn't I earn it to get here? Now you're trying to tell me I got to keep this? It, isn't that it? Right, right, right. <laughs> so He said, well, the, honey, the honeymoon is over, baby. <laughs> over, man. It was over. But, but I mean, yeah. oh, man, one of the things I've always loved and appreciated – about Marquette University was that, man, no matter whatever Will Gates was going through, them jokers had my back, man. Uh, Mm -hmm. That's my school for life. Uh, uh, Man, I'm absolutely 100% excited and and proud to say that I went to that university because, uh, man, they took care of me, man. They they took care of me. Uh, They they Mm -hmm. supported me, they supported my family. And what I'm talking about is I ain't talking about financials and stuff like that. I'm talking about in terms of, man, when I got married, uh, when my daughter and my wife came up there, man, they made sure we had married housing. I mean, man, it was it was top notch, man. They Everything that they could do for me legally, Marquette made sure that it happened, man. I mean, I ain't got nothing but love for Marquette University. All right, so since you, since, since you said something about legally, uh, athletes should definitely get some bread. And they're getting the bread now. They're getting bread now through the stipend and all that, and it's allowing them to get stipend. But what I don't like about that is 
is that a disparity because say if you like at like a LaSalle University versus like a Maryland, now Maryland, now LaSalle might be that ticket where as though, man, you go there, you never know what's gonna happen. You can make it to that upper level and get that big money. But you're looking at Maryland because they're able to give you bigger stipends and and you talking about kids that don't have much. So it's kind of like they doing some things, but it's kind of like messed up at the same time, man. It it is. I agree with you, man. And truthfully, there's some there's some um, conferences that don't give their kids money at all. They don't even get the stipend. They might get money like when school is out, they give them money, you know, for the the, the spring breaks or the, the 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 winter breaks. But man, they some conferences don't even give that little, you know, four, five hundred, six hundred dollars a month. Uh, but I agree with you, man. They need to pay these guys. And I definitely. I sent a letter to the NCAA saying, listen, one of the things that I think that a lot of particularly black athletes struggle with, I mean, I don't know if white athletes struggle with this or not, but we put so much time and energy and effort and love into the mm -hmm. game that mm -hmm. when we're done, man, we don't do the normal things that people did while they were in college. Like we went, like I didn't do internships, you know, I, I even after my freshman year, Man, we, we were going out of the country. You don't have time to make plans to build a life successfully after basketball. So what I proposed to the NCAA and just said, hey, listen, why don't you get these guys, every year they're in school, $25,000 a year. So when they leave, with interest, you know they at least have a hundred grand when they leave the school with that diploma. And then on top of that, pay for their grad school. Now, if they don't make the league or they're not playing overseas, they can go to grad school and do those normal college things that they weren't able to do while they were a student athlete. Because I just, I just, right. I just, I man, just. That's a, that's, man, that's good. That's some good stuff, man. That's some good stuff because we put, we make a lot of money. We generate a lot of money for a lot of people. Yes. Shoe companies, you know, uh, you know, the universities, you know, and, and, and it's crazy. You know, I was watching uh, Ray Allen one time. And he was talking about when he knew he had to go pro was when he seen everybody selling his T-shirts, making a making a making a living off of it. And he couldn't even, you know what I'm saying, get it for free because that's an NCAA violation. <laughs> right. Right. So, so. Right. Come on, man. I remember when we were playing. This, this is how crazy NCAA was. I think they done changed a little bit now. But when they gave you two pairs of shoes, you had to turn in a pair. <laughs> to get a new pair. <laughs> wow. That's how it was. Wow. <laughs> wow, that's crazy, man. So let me, you know what, let me let me get into uh, hoop, hoop Dreams a little bit. And I already talked about, like, uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about is, like, how like, how they portrayed you, like, you seem like you were never happy. Right. You know what I'm saying? But we, so we, we talked about, we talked about that. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, when you look at, you know, Arthur, you know, Having this guy, they having party, they having fun, and and then your and then your situation, like you say, was a little bit more serious. With you about to have a baby, and and uh, and you were the better, better player anyway. So you more focused on what it is you needed to do in terms of getting your family, you know, out of that struggle, and which is a serious, which is a serious thing. But uh, was it anything that you could recall that footage that might have been shot that you might have? That they probably took that wasn't in there that you might want it in there or anything that you might have uh, uh, wanted them to not not have in there. You know what? I, I don't I don't think so because I think there were things that um, they probably wanted to put in there that my family mm -hmm. wasn't against because one of the things I tell people is that Hoopers is about two and a half two hours and forty five minutes, but they shot mm -hmm. over five hundred hours of film. Mm -hmm. That's a lot footage out there so there was things man like you know with my mom and you know we just you know that we didn't want that exposed um, uh -huh. uh, things my brother that he didn't want exposed so uh -huh. I think when it when it when it did come to our family we probably was a little bit more reserved than the AGs um, uh -huh. we, we really wasn't trying to sell a, a documentary we was living life and and I think uh, and to some degree, we didn't know what they were gonna do with the footage. I mean, after mm -hmm. they came back and said, "Hey, you know the 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 higher goals piece," they said, "Listen, we think we got something a little bit more because that was only supposed to be two weeks." So they, then they came back and said, "Hey, we want to film a little bit more," 
and then a little bit more turns into four years. Uh -huh. you, don't, you don't know what they're going to do. So when we sat down and we was going through the editing process and all that, there were things that, you know, that you just said, no, you won't put okay. that in there. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, Because, you know, what was, uh, what I ain't like, let me just give you a few things that I, I didn't like about, I didn't like, man, I understand, you know, Arthur's dad had his issues with the drugs, but I ain't, I, I definitely ain't like that scene where they got him copping drugs, man. I thought, yeah. it, but it's a reality TV. I think this was like the first reality TV. It's a real documentary, but I thought that could have been told without actually showing that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, but, I was, but I'm gonna tell, okay. tell you what happened though. Um, they could have had that taken out. Bo wanted to show it. Okay. Bo was like, "Hey, man, no, this needs to be in here because it might save somebody else's family." So okay. you know, and you know, man, rest in peace to Bo. AG is well. the ball, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, man, this is this what I wanted to ask because uh, now me, with me coaching at uh, Newman Newman Garetti in Philly was Newman first, and is now merged with the girls. But you know, I so I know how that Catholic uh, system is, is set up. And I actually was talking to one of my guys. I think he on the feed too, Coach Pat, uh, one of my one of my white buddies. Pat, you better grab uh, one of those uh, hoodies. The white and black hoodie that I told you I'm grabbing, so make sure you grab it because when I posted everything, he's like, oh, man, my favorite joint. I got to get on. If this is your favorite joint, Pat, you got to grab a hoodie. Anybody else that's listening, you know, we got the hoodies. Link it to his bio. He got some hoodies for sale. So, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, with me coaching, you know, at the, at the, you know, the Catholic League, and, and uh, I just wanted to ask, like, what was your relationship with Coach Picatore because they didn't portray him in a positive life, I felt. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Well, so I'm going to tell you like this, man. Right. People, people got to recognize this. Again, um, back then, the game was a little bit different. It was coach different. Um, Payne was a, was, a, was a, you know, a Bobby Knight clone, in a sense. But mm -hmm. I've always told people this. To this very day, that's the best coach I've ever had. That dude taught me the game of basketball. I knew how to play, but he taught me how to play. He taught me, like, even when I went to Marquette, I knew I was ready to play because, man, when we were in practice, I understood defensive positions. I understood back doors, back cut. I knew how to talk. I, I was the kind of point guard that I knew where everybody was supposed to be, when they were supposed to be there. I could tell the guy, hey, man, you missed your assignment. No, you no left side. I that was I was that kind of point guard. So, but I picked that up from Pain because he was four years playing for him. All he kept saying was, "Well, if we're gonna, we're only gonna go as far as you take us." He said, "You gotta take some ownership and responsibility of this team." So, man, that dude taught me the game like no other person has ever taught me. Now, in terms right. of our relationship, I always tell people this, man. I'm a rebellious kid at the time. I'm 14, 15. Of course I didn't like him yelling at me. I, I, I didn't like my mother yelling at me at 14, 15, because I <laughs> want to have things my way. I want to do it my way. And 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 at 14, 15, who wants, you know, that constant nagging at you, yelling at you, and coming hard at you? I just want to have some fun. I just wanted to play. But St. Joe's was a different type of program. I mean, when I walked into the gym and you look up uh, up in the step in the banners, man, that, that from before Isaiah played, like like his, I guess I guess if there was some pressure at St. Joe's, it was this. St. Joe's when I got there had won fourteen consecutive conference championships. The first thing I was told was you don't want to be the guy team that doesn't win. <laughs> Right, you know, right, right, right. Conference championship. So my high school career, I think I've lost maybe ten games. Uh -huh. So, but we didn't. We we won all our conference championship. <laughs> right, right, right. I wasn't, I wasn't gonna be the team that lost the conference championship. So when other guys come in and they see the banners up there, well, they're gonna see Will Gates' name on that banner because for four years straight, because we won all four of those. Right, right. Coach, Coach Pat just said he said he got you. <laughs> Shout out to Coach Pat. He said he got you. He said he got you. He got yes, you. Because I was talking to him. He was like, man, you know, 
that's my. He was like, you know, and 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 when we talk about you, you know, and everybody talk about you and I. We talk as if y'all are personal friends, and we know y'all. So he's like, oh man, you know, that's my guy, Will Gates, yada yada yada. He said, man, that fucking picking toy. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm glad you, I'm glad you, uh, you know, and, and, and uh, I'm glad you, uh, you know, straighten yeah. that out. You know what I mean? And also with, too, man, you know, rest in peace to Coach Ping too, man. You know, he passed away yeah, last year. Ping, rest in peace to Coach Ping. So you know, and and um, you know, and it's a little bit further down in the interview, but I I knew that your relationship with him. And you had to have a lot of respect and trust for him when I seen that your son attended the school. So I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. If your son attended the school, yeah. and you, if, you, if, if I trust my son with you, then we all right. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Because That's my, think, valuable, my most valuable possession. Absolutely. I think one of the things that people, and, and, and I don't think the, the documentary probably did the best job of showing this to, um, you know, they hear Coach Payne saying, you know, you got to, you know, write them off. And so they took that as coach was saying, write your family off. Now, uh, coach was in his own way trying to say, you got to stay focused on what you're doing. Because I always tell people this, for a man to tell me to, to write them off, who do they think I was going to when I needed diapers and wipes mm -hmm. and baby formula? I was going mm -hmm. to Coach Ping. And Coach mm -hmm. Ping was taking me to the store and getting me diapers and, and wipes <laughs> You know, right, right, right. I had no money. <laughs> right, 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 right. You know? And you could definitely see that 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 coach uh was definitely in your corner. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh so yeah, you know, and, and, and then he help then he help with your uh, getting your brother that job, that summer that that, that summer Bro, job that, that was, job that, that, was, that was actually man, as people call the it my, my my sponsor. But uh right. it's weird and her family man, they actually really good people too, man. I mean, love them to death. Uh, but yeah, she got she got my brother the job, man. I remember my brother telling me he said he said, man, she got to be pretty powerful because he said when when he went there, they had a sign out there that said not hiring, and he walked right there and got a job. So, uh, but I, I shout I, out the Lord grateful for that. Absolutely, uh huh. The uh -huh. Weir family, yes, sir. Yeah, and uh, and I think uh, Coach yeah, and Coach Pat. Also, we all, me and Coach Pat also talked about uh, the Arthur uh, 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 AG situation and how he, you know, you got a little bit more insight on that. Can you share yeah. a little bit about, you know, yeah. how that went down or what was going on with that situation? Because from the outside looking in, it looked, it looked like, you know, it looks bad. he didn't pan out. So he didn't, he didn't, he wasn't getting that help. It, it looks bad. I, you know, I always look at it this way. I'm, I'm going to give, I'm going to give a couple of variations of it. One is that, um, I feel like this. If you're going to bring a kid out to your school, whether they paying out or not, if you bring them, you pay for it. You make it happen. Hey, if it just didn't work out, it just didn't work out. But you don't rip a kid out of his community, out of his neighborhood, change his life, and then you don't follow through on that. So I was never mm -hmm. a fan of that. And I wasn't a fan of that personally because that was my road dog. That's who I hung out with. The right. other aspect of it is, okay, you, 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 you get rid of them, but then why are you holding on to the tra transcripts? Just give it to them. Right. Let them go. Right. You, you, you've right. already made it clear. This thing ain't mm -hmm. gonna work out. Give them the transcripts and let them go. The other mm -hmm. thing was, uh, academically, they knew when Arthur and I both got there, we wasn't doing extremely well academically. I took right. it a little bit more serious, and he didn't. And I think they also use that as um, a way to say, well, you know, academically he isn't doing well too, so maybe this is just not the school for him academically. And I'm like, well, y'all got to fix that too. You know, that's what, you know, higher education is all about. You got you to uh -huh. fix it. So, again, uh, it, it, I ain't going to say it, it's, I ain't going to say it, it's, it was it was a it was a difficult and sad situation, and I think they could have handled it better. But I also think that St. Joe's wish they would have handled that better because I don't think they thought at the time that it being on film, it would have came across the way that it did. But I think if right, they could right. have a do over, man, they'll definitely do that one over without a doubt. Right, right, right. <laughs> As Coach Pack said exactly, I thought they did him dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, Pat, Pat. 
Yeah, because man, Pat, he's a he's a he's a good he's a Caucasian guy. He's a good guy. Uh, you know, he coached at uh, Newman, like I said. Uh, and and he have our kids with him, man. He, he and he do a good job with our kids, man. You know, uh, whether guys paying out or not, man, he's fighting and fighting, and fighting and pushing yeah. for them. And he told me earlier, man. He said, "Listen, I would have never left a kid. I don't care, just like you just said, if it paying out or not. I would never left a kid like that. Once I take him in and say I'm gonna look out for him, I gotta follow my word. I got, you right. know, what I'm saying I gotta finish it off. That's right. And especially when you make a promise to the family, right? You know, right. You tell that kid, hey, you put in the time, you put in the work. I guarantee you, in four years, you're gonna go put some place to play. I don't know where it might be, but you're gonna go some place to play." The school made that commitment to to the AG family, and they got they should have followed through on that thing. Right, right, right. So now you graduate from you graduate from college, mm -hmm. communication degree. Shout out to you on the communications degree. I actually graduated from Tumble Speech Communications degree, so we are around the same type of type of degree. Shout out to you. Shout out to uh, you. on that communi communication thing, right? Uh, what happened after that? After you graduated, what was your mindset? Well, what the mindset about? at that time was. I actually thought that I was going to play, but Hoop Dreams came out. Right. So from there, man, I went on this world tour. Man, I'm I'm doing Oprah. I'm doing. I'm at these celebrity basketball tournaments. I'm doing. I'm doing. I'm at celebrity birthday parties. I, I mean, I'm traveling the world, making money. You know, doing Hoop Dream stuff. You know, I'm on. I literally, man, I went on this black, which was probably one of the greatest things ever. I went on the HBCU tour. I mm -hmm. literally started at Hampton University and worked my way all the way down the East Coast, man, until I got to Tallahassee, Florida, and and was just speaking at all of the HBCU, HBCUs along the way, man. Just, just, and of course, my greatest stop, I remember we stopped at Gramlin. I was like, oh, man, they different mm -hmm. here. They different mm -hmm. here. <laughs> mm -hmm. now, and I will say this, man, I, I even thought about that when I was coming out. Man, I was never recruited by those schools but i think if those schools would have recruited me man i definitely would have considered an hbcu absolutely you know what you know what and i wanted to ask you that since you had brought the hbcus up because you know they sparking this movement to have especially like the one and done guys to go to an hbcu for one year you know what i'm saying the one kid uh, uh maker he's going to yep. H how one year and then boom to yep. the league hopefully you know what I'm saying? What's your opinion on that? Because I do think that'll help the uh, HBCUs financially, exposure-wise. You know, every, 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 everything is a is a great call for uh uh uh. It's a great. It could definitely help the HBCUs, in my opinion. I'm gonna tell you this, man. About time. <laughs> so like, it's about time because not only will it, it help the HBCUs, now all of a sudden, man, everything changes. That TV money gets over there. The facilities yep. get better, and now. <laughs> The recruiting becomes um, that with these guys going that that's kind of like the equalizer. Now, now, you know, they can go out and recruit a guy and and tell him, hey, look at the facility you're gonna play in. Look at our weight room. Look at these. We we got the amenities that can compete, but you gotta have the money to get there. Mm -hmm. But on the yeah. other aspect of it is, man, I look at it this way too. That's I think on on, on some level that's gonna be a a greater sense of pride too, like ownership. Yeah. Like man, right. I'm 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 at a HBCU. That 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 rings differently when you when you talk right. about it. You know, it right. it's more personal at this stage. So, man, I I I hope making this isn't the only one. I hope there's more that not only consider it but but go do it. Yep. That it's yep. it's 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 time. It's time, man, because I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, even again, man, when I'm when I'm watching these Tyler Perry shows and you know, watching the brothers and all these other guys, man, I, there's some aspect of it that I always say to myself, man, I missed out on those types of relationships. You know, mm -hmm. you know, I got some good friends, but you know, and, you know, and even even you know, my frat brothers, you know, Phi Beta Sigma, shout out to them, um, mm -hmm. but. We had to go to a whole nother school to kind of accomplish those kinds of things. You know, Marquette didn't offer that. So I think mm -hmm. it's just something about being in the midst of that environment, man, that that sense of culture and pride that, you know, I think I missed out on being at Marquette. All right. 
Now, you know what? Uh, 2001, right? You had the opportunity to work out extensively. <laughs> with, not the doing. greatest player. Not the greatest player to ever play. The second greatest player to ever play. Because <laughs> and, and 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 it ain't it ain't LeBron ain't number one. I, I, Wilson Norman Chamberlain, Wilson Chamberlain is, is by far the greatest player to ever play the game. You know what I'm right. saying? They say he's the most dominant, but he's the greatest player. But right. you got a chance to work out with MJ extensively. Like, how was that experience? First of all, man, <laughs> it was it was top notch. But here's the funny thing. I remember the first time I get the call to come down and play. I walk in. Wasn't really that many of us from outsiders at that point. <laughs> Going there, man, it's like the 1990-91 Bulls championship team. I'm looking at Bill Winnington and all these old guys, man. And they were some savvy vets just out there killing. But as as the as the training went along and the top college guys, you know, who didn't make the NCAA tur AA tournament or when that tournament run was over, they was coming down. And the guys who didn't make the NBA playoffs, they started showing up. And here's what was weird. I remember we were playing one day and, the 17-year-old kid, about 6'8", man, weighing about 260 pounds, walks in the gym, and I'm like, who is this kid? Just in there, uh -huh. man, dunking on people. And, of course, you know, there's no other than LeBron James. I'm like, right, right, I'm right, like, yeah, right. That, I'm like, yeah, that guy's pretty good. <laughs> he's he's going to be <laughs> all right. So, right, you know, right. It, it, was just, it was just amazing, um, you know, to see all – the people there, and, and again, these are these are the younger guys. Of course, there was a lot of Carolina guys there. You know, the Bulls players were there. So it was, man, it was just the. It, but here's my biggest takeaway, even from the basketball. I remember, <laughs> I thought I had a decent car. I remember pulling up, man, looking into the lot. Man, there had to be at least a billion dollars worth of cars. <laughs> <laughs> so did the parking lot. I'm looking like, man, it's out my league, man. I ain't on that level. That's, that's, that's a whole different level there, man. I ain't there. Right, 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 right. Facts, facts. And you, <laughs> you know what? With, with me having experience of being around an NBA player and I'm pulling up in my nice car that's nice to everybody I didn't grow up with, and I'm like, whoa, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I definitely know that. I definitely know that feeling. My man, <laughs> my man from Soul Pack said, Send you the video, the Wilt video. I, I had to send him. I had to send him a video to make him a believer. So I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna send you some. I'm gonna send you some Wilt stuff. But check out, check out. Hey, Will, when you get a chance, check out Soul Pack. You know what I'm saying? This my guy. It's, it's, you know, when I started the video, I talked about him uh, powering this uh, feed right here. Absolutely. Check out his uh, joint. Hey, and what, uh, what can I get that at? So uh, it says go Soul, go Soul Pack on Instagram. They got the nice little shoes that fit your little bags and all that stuff. You get. Uh, custom made with your uh, ball sneaks and and the whole nine. Okay. And actually, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna have them send you some little work, man. Y'all might do a little with your cross brand thing. You know what I'm saying? With some old shoes Absolutely. or something. You know what I'm saying? Because he's a good dude. He's a good dude, man. He helped me out a lot with my brand and my different stuff that I do. You know what I'm saying? Okay. He's a good dude. But uh, yeah. So uh, I see that Arthur uh, Ag got an opportunity to meet Bill Clinton. Did you get that chance to meet Bill Clinton? <laughs> No, I didn't meet Clinton, but I, I did meet the Obamas, though. Okay. <laughs> I take that. I take that. But, you know, but at that time, um, we was both was, was, was doing so many different things and meeting so many different people. Uh, like I say, mm -hmm. you know, I'm on the Oprah show. Uh, I'm at Jordan's birthday party. Uh, uh, I mean, it was, it was, man, it was crazy. It was wild. I mean, I can honestly say, man, People talk about fifteen minutes of fame. Man, we we we've had it for a long time, man. I think we got more than right, fifteen right. minutes. Here we are right, celebrating. Right, right. We're celebrating right. twenty five years, and 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 I'm talking to you on All City Classics right now. You know, it's twenty five years. Yeah, 25 20, years. we had twenty five. It'd have been twenty six. The Corona ain't shut me down. <laughs> Shout out to Corona for shutting me down. I needed the year off. Corona gave me a year off. Hopefully, it's just a year. That's you know right. what I'm saying? Let right. me ask you this, man. What's the pros and cons of being William Gates, who, who James Starr? The, the the pros is that um, is that it, it, it opened up every door that I've ever walked into post-basketball and, uh -huh. and even during basketball. I mean, it, it, it definitely put me in, in, some, in some good positions, some good situations. Um, a lot of the cons are is that people can automatically assume that you're always okay. Right. People always think that 
you know, man, you, you always got to figure it out or that you don't need nothing or, or that, you know, you just, you're on top of everything. And, and they keep trying to tell people, you know, that ain't really how life works. Everybody got mm -hmm. ups and downs, ins and outs and backs and forwards. And, you know, uh, so Will, Will Gates have just as many bad days as he does good days. But the, the, when, when you're in the limelight, it people just kind of get that assumption that everything is always all right, and and okay. and that's just a misconception. But everything positive, man, has ever happened in my life, you know, basketball wise, man, hoop dreams is 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 the right. star of that without a doubt. Right, right, right. Facts, facts, facts. Now, when I had Terry Cummins on, he talked about uh, getting into his ministry, you know, early. So I just wanted to let everybody know, like, you're a pastor. And I just want you to speak about that and your transition into that because I know that's important to you. So it's important to you, it's important to me, and it's important to get the information out. Absolutely, man. I, you know, um, I went into ministry, man, literally. It, it always been that calling on my life. My grandfather was a pastor. Um, okay. So that, that calling had always been on my life. But it wasn't until the year about 2000 and um, I think the year about 2000, man, when I accepted the calling. And uh, mm -hmm. it's interesting because uh, what God was calling me to was back to Cabrini to teach and preach. Now, at this time, man, I, I really didn't want to do it because, you know, uh, you know, I just lost my brother. I was in a funk. And the last thing I wanted to do was go and try to help people. I'm like, man, mm -hmm. I'm struggling, you know, internally. I, I have nothing good to share with anybody. And it turns to find out, man, I took all that hurt, that pain, uh, and of course went to school, you know, uh, got that, you know, that you got to go get that ministry license. I'm not a license. You got to go get that degree, you know. Uh -huh. So I went and did all the right things that I needed to do, took the ministry back to the neighborhood, man. And, and what I come to find out that I was able to um, help people that I grew up with, uh, man, it was, it was amazing. Uh -huh. Uh, how many, you know, friends that I had that, you know, when, 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 when their parents passed away, I was able to help lay their parents to rest or when violence was happening in the neighborhood, because uh, my ministry, we kind of sat right in the center of the neighborhood. Uh, I was kind of like that first call, Hey, Will, stuff going down. Can you come and man, help us deal with this? So I felt a sense of responsibility to the neighborhood. I felt a sense of, of ownership of that. And most importantly, man, the, the main goal was to, because Cabrini was, was changing at the time, the, the community was gentrifying. So my goal was that as people was transitioning to help them find, you know, a church home someplace else, as well as help them find adequate housing as the neighborhood literally was making people move to new locations. So, we had man a fivefold ministry with a lot of purpose and a lot of passion, and did it for about almost ten years. And um, you know, and once the community kind of shifted, you know, God released me to come down here to San Antonio, where I'm not necessarily pastoring, but I'm still preaching the word of God at a church called Higher Ground uh, Community Church. So uh, excited about man still being able to deliver that word and preach it when called upon. Okay. Now San Antonio, that's sure. a that's a uh, that's a spot that Sue also played in too. So I had an opportunity to come down to San Antonio, and uh, that I think I think that arena is the best arena in NBA basketball. It's like every it feel like every seat you in is a good seat. Even though I was down yeah. on even though I was down on the floor, but it was like I'm walking around every time I go to a seat, I walk around, I check I check the arenas out, I check everything out or whatever, whatever. So I get out and I walk around. And uh, I felt like that was the, that's one of the best arenas, you know, and 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 basketball. But coming out, uh, every city I go to, I always try to feel like, all right, what's the best uh, dish here? What can I eat? Da, da, da. So I'm asking them. They like go get a, a, a water burger. So I'm thinking they say water burger, right? <laughs> but it's water burger. So I'm asking people like, where you get I'm trying to find a water burger? I'm like, so what's up with this water burger? He's like, no, it's water burger. But I got my water burger, man, and it was uh, it was it was, it was good, especially the little sauces that they had that you put on your burger and all that. Oh man, that water, that uh, yeah, that was dope, man. 
<laughs> I gotta make a confession, man. I think I've only had one in my life. <laughs> yeah, I only had one too. <laughs> I only had one too. <laughs> hey, listen, listen, man. I'm with you. When I first heard about it, I was like, Whataburger? What about what a Whataburger? But that's man, that's a staple down here and right, the right. Staples right. in San Antonio is obviously the 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 briskets, the briskets, mm -hmm. the Whataburger. And for whatever reason, red pop. <laughs> Folks love red pop here, man. But right, I, right, I, right. I, listen, I still, my family, I, we still do this, man, every year for Christmas. You know, we have a Chicago Christmas. Like, we ain't eating turkey and Thanksgiving, you know, that kind of meals. For Christmas, man, we get, we bring in the Chicago style hot dogs, the Chicago pizza, mm. the Garrett's popcorn, you uh. know. The huh. Eli's cheesecake, we 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 ship it all in. It down, right? Yeah, man. Gotta bring it down. Yes, <laughs> sir. There's a well. I want to thank you for hopping on with me. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take some questions, and then we're gonna wrap it up with your final thoughts with everything. But if y'all got any questions for Will Gate, please shoot some. Uh, Will Gates, please shoot out some questions. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, this John been real. Just. It was Pooh, my man Pooh on the feed. Pooh, I know you got a question. I know you got a question, Pooh, man. It was a good question. Most of you on the feed, you always come with some good questions. Pat, if you still on the feed, you know what I mean? We need some good questions from Mr. Gates, man. Just give a little second, you know what I'm saying? They'll shoot some questions out as they cool. type, man. Which, but... which, which, if you don't mind, I got about 10 more minutes in me. That's cool. Because I, I actually got to do another interview. All right, that's cool because we about to get out. We about to break it down. So it, it's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. No questions, y'all. No questions for my man, Will Gates. All right, so for all right, here we go. Well, we gotta have a reunion one day. That's kind of. I guess that's probably one of your guys. Ricky Tucker, you ain't on the feed, man. All right, so this is what we gonna do. Well, we gonna uh, just give you your final thoughts, man, on anything you wanna share with the youth. You know what I'm saying? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We say, hold on, hey, now they coming, now they coming. They always do this, man. As soon as I ready to wrap it up, <laughs> they come with the questions. Did you, they say, did you ever lose the love for the game? You know what, man? I I never lost the love of the game. What I had to do was I had to rediscover uh, the passion. Mm -hmm. And and to me, those those are two different things because love is you know like you you can be in love, but but the passion, like I, so I had to rediscover the passion of the game because after the knee surgeries, I wasn't playing as well as I wanted to play. So that passion for the game went away. So I was, sometimes I was just showing up, you know, and just hooping. But when, mm -hmm. but when you in love with the game, you know, you're there, you know, before the game start, you know, an right. hour beforehand, right. getting up shot. Right. So I was still doing all those things, but the passion I had to rediscover because it, it got to the point like sometimes I'll say, man, if he put me in or not, I don't care. And I had to change right. that mindset. I said, my, right. I got to get the right. passion back for this. And the passion did come back. She went up a big dog. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, man. When we came out, I thought, I thought big dog, at least in high school, was the closest thing to Jordan I had ever seen, man. At that particular time, that class of 91, without uh -huh. a doubt. Big Dog was the best player to come out of the class of 91 for that that season of 91. Okay, cool, cool, cool. How good was uh, Tom uh, Klein Smith? You know what? TK was, man, TK was crazy. He was 6'5". His issue was he was a tweener. Right. He, wasn't, he wasn't big enough to be a small forward, and he was too big at the time, at least what they were saying. I mean, he wasn't big enough to be – he wasn't quick enough to be a small forward, and he wasn't big enough to be a power forward. But that dude could shoot the lights out. I mean, he was a McDonald's All-American. I mean, TK – I mean, he's a Chicago great, without a doubt. You still play from time to time? First of all, man, I don't know if I – I don't even know if people even know this, but, man, I done had two total knee replacements. I can't even hoop anymore. I'm still recovering from them now because I have one. 2019 in November, and then I did the right knee uh, this past May of 2020. So now, prior to that, I was still hooping. That's probably why I had to get my knees replaced because I would, wouldn't put that ball down. 
But yeah, I, I, I got to put it down. The doctor told me. I had even asked him when I got the surgery. I said, can I hoop again? And they was like, yeah, if you want to see us in about five years, you can go out there and hoop. So I may sneak out there. All right, so my old head asked about how Arthur's doing. Arthur's doing really well, man. Um, he's still in Chicago. Mom is doing well. Um, uh, just keep her in prayer, man, because, you know, COVID is touching on everybody, you know, and, mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. know, you know, our moms, they're, they're older, you know, that older gener generation are a little bit susceptible to us, so keep them in prayer. But he's doing mm -hmm. well. Uh, you know, I always tell people this about Arthur's and our relationship. This, you know, we... We don't talk all the time, but we, when we do, we pick up right where we left off at because that's just my dog. But our relationship worked like this. Arthur spends a majority of his time trying to get my feet off the ground, and I spend all my time trying to keep his feet on the ground. So we really just balance <laughs> each other's off. You know, we balance each other out like that way. Yeah, yeah. So listen, we're going to take one more question, and then, we gonna, and then I'm going to let you finish off. So if somebody shoot a question real quick, first question that come up, we're going to answer that. You know what I'm saying, and uh, and that's and that's it. That's gonna that's gonna wrap that's gonna wrap it up. And again, man, I appreciate you. I definitely appreciate you having on. Uh, Philly, you've been in Philly a lot. Yeah, I've been to Philly, man. As a matter of fact, my daughter just moved to to Jersey, but she's closer to Philly. Right. So it's probably South Jersey. Yeah. So so we're gonna do this. Whenever whenever you come visit your daughter, you know, hit me up, and I'll take you get your rug. We're good Philly cheesesteaks, man. Absolutely. Also, I see my man out there, Coach Dunk. He on the, he out, he out there. On the right, uh, Coach, Coach, uh, Dunk, Coach Dunk Eleven. Okay, Coach Dunk Eleven. He got a question. No, he I said, don't. "My man, who, who dreams with the knowledge." Yeah, uh, my brother. That's my that's, that's that's my road dog there, man. Mm -hmm. Two AAU together. Coach Killer Five. Who you you got a question? Put your question and you could be the last question. Type it up real quick. Cause we gotta get off. And then and then after this question, anything that you want to share with the youth that's going from Philadelphia or whoever else gonna be watching his feed, I want you to sign off with that. Absolutely. Give him give him one more uh, minute to uh, type his question in and then And let me just do this cheesy plug real quick. But hey man, y'all go out there and get some of that gear, man. It's HD dash twenty two dot com. HD dash twenty two dot com. I'm gonna I'm gonna type it in the feed for everybody. Yeah, sure. and then you know what? You know what too? Uh, I will send it. Send send me something to my what's your name, and I can put it up in my stories. I'll put it up in my story as soon as we get off. Okay. Whatever you send me, I'm gonna post and push it. Hey, you see, and, and I'm I, and I, I'm grabbing I'm grabbing I'm grabbing something for me, and my wife, and my uh and my uh and my daughter. You got Pat gonna grab some stuff. We're gonna try to get you some Philly, uh, some Philly love. Some Philly love. I appreciate that, man. As a matter of fact, man, because I'm on your show. If if uh, folks go get some stuff, man, uh, in the next 24 hours, I I put up there a, a 10 percent discount. All they gotta do is all caps, all city. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Cool. 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 So anything? Uh, what do you say? What's your what's your all time? Oh, your all time starting five. From Chicago, he trying to get you in trouble. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, man. This this so tough, but uh, I'm I'm gonna start it with this. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put um, Zeke gonna always be my starting point guard without a doubt. I'm gonna put uh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna put Terry Cummins at the four. Uh, man, I know he's not a a a a. He's a point guard, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna throw Derrick Rose. Right mm -hmm. in at the two. Uh, I'm gonna give D Wade the three spot because 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 D Wade to me is still probably you know depending on what where they put Kobe if they put Kobe at a small forward then D Wade become the second greatest two guard to ever play the game. If not, mm -hmm. if they keep Kobe at the two, then D Wade number three. Um, the big man's uh, you know power forwards. Man, this this. I got my man from Philly. My man said, "Ad, <laughs> you know what? Ad got to go in it, but I mean, it, but but Ad so new right now, because I, I would have to put a guy like Bill Buckner in there, man, because that joke. Yo, yo, my man getting disrespectful, man. Melvin Eli. 
Hey, she was good, but not no top five, right, man. Big, right, big man. I remember, yeah, man. Big See, man. my man lived out in Chicago, so he cool with Mama Eli. That's why he's saying that, Mama man, Eli. He's a baller, without a doubt. I remember, man, yeah. remember him in high school. He was a baller, absolutely. But I mean, and then it's just so many. It's so many. But but I, I got to put Buckner in it because I mean that joke won on every level, high school, right. college, pros. Um, yeah, I mean, I just had so many good dudes, man. Yeah, I mean, that's hard I mean, to do a five, man. Right. Because you could do another five. This that's that's crazy too. Yeah, I. I <laughs> Cause you know how you, how you and, and we're just talking about high school basketball. This ain't even got nothing to do with guys that they made the pros or not. So how do you, you know, I gotta leave out a Jamie Brandon. I gotta leave out, you know, Mike Finn. I gotta leave out, you know, um, Marcus Liberty. Marcus Liberty, who's who's Chicago's all-time leading scorer. Ain't nobody scoring more points than that dude ever. I mean, mm -hmm. Nick Anderson, <laughs> Tim Hardaway. Hey. I mean, it just. It goes on. Keep coming. On and on. Keep coming, man. Hey, 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 God brother, like brother, Murray. And, truth, and truthfully, man, I mean, even my brother Curtis, that dude was a beast in high school, man. I mean, Kurt, Kurt was averaging 36 in high school. I mean, he was ridiculous. Yeah, real quick, there's somebody they, they asked about Benji, so I'm going to answer that. He said it was, uh, who was it? Michael Jordan, right? Ophel Winfrey. And then Benji. Ben That's what it was when Benji was around. And Ben Wilson. He said, he was, it was Ben Wilson. <laughs> yeah. And just to let you know, uh, Jesse Jackson was four at the time. So, <laughs> ben Wilson was that popular as an athlete at that time. Like with his his right. it shut the city down. Like dictators and presidents and mayors and governors. Man, his 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 whole Man, it was it was so huge, man. It was it was something else, something else. So, so well, I know you gotta go. You know what I'm saying? Cause I could go on for another 30, 40 minutes, but I know you gotta go. I think thanks for thanks for getting on. So just uh for all the young kids that's watching, that's looking, if you want any positive feedback, you want to give them about anything, whether it's life, ministry, basketball, anything. That's that's what I want to tell the kids, man. And I and just and it's just a little story. You know, the story I always tell kids is this. You know. It was a teacher, it's a master and a student. And one day the student was at the final stage of getting the belt. And what he did was the master came to him and gave him this log and said, here's your final assignment. I want you to carry this log through the woods and take it to the tree where it's hanging is your black belt. So he put the log on and as he was carrying the log, it began to get heavy as he was going through the woods. Along the way, he saw a saw. So he grabbed the saw, and what he did was he began to cut it so that it would lighten his load. So he put the log back up on his shoulders. The load was lighter. He began to go to his destination. And when he got to the tree, he recognized that there was a water that separated him from one side to where the tree was at. In his mind, he thought, oh, great, I got this log. I just laid it down and walk across. But wouldn't you know it, when he laid it down, just the point where he cut it off at, he was short, and the log sunk. In other words, he failed his test. What I always tell kids, don't cut yourself short. If, if you got the mindset to do it, don't let nobody stop you. Push it. Pursue it. Fight through it. Don't take any shortcuts because those don't win. It might get you to the gate, but it don't open the gate. The people that's fighting through it are the ones that are going to get the greatest success. And the reality is, is this. Those are the best prepared, has the best chance of success. It doesn't guarantee success, but it guarantees you the best chance at having success. And I'll take that than not having success at all. Oh, powerful words, man. Powerful words. Thank you, Will Gates, man. We appreciate you. All City Classic, Sports Life and Music. Follow our page. Follow his page. And uh, you're going to send me this stuff so I can pers uh, post your merch. You know what I'm saying? Anything you send me, I'm going I'm to put it in my stories any, at any time. You know what I'm saying? You know, we good. We good. We good for life, my brother. I appreciate I you doing this for me. And just like I said, man, we're going to grab some stuff, man.
I appreciate it, man. Listen, I'm going I'm to connect with you anyway, man, because I want to do what, what you talked about earlier. Let's collab. Absolutely. Facts. Facts. Let's do that. Let's do that. I appreciate right. you, man. Amen, man. Y'all right. out there. Take it easy, Will. All right. All right. All City Classic Sports Life and Music, we signing off. Like I said, follow his page, uh, Hoops uh, 22 Dreams. Follow our page at All City Classic. Thank you for coming on, man. This was a good this was a good joint, man. I appreciate everybody that support us. Keep on continuing to support us. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know I'll support y'all guys. If y'all need me for anything, I'm here. Peace.